Today is September 30th and my subscription has arrived. Let's take a look. Your monthly subscription is here. Yay! You acquire an item, Boxed Bat Wings. As a special bonus for subscribers, please accept this small token of our gratitude. You acquire an item, Box of Gratitude Chocolates. Yay! More chocolates! Very exciting. Okay, so just like last time though, I'm gonna open the box of gratitude chocolates first. This is a box of the kind of really expensive assorted chocolates you'd give somebody if you were really, really thankful. Thank you! Without the dedicated support of players like you, we wouldn't be able to keep the lights on. The little blinking ones on the front of the servers, I mean. Chick. Yay! We've got meat filled! We've got an other octopus filled! Yay! Okay, so these are the same ones as last time, but still very exciting. I love my little octopus. So cute! Boxed bat wings. Your own pair of bat wings, just like great great uncle Vlad used to wear. <laughs> Type usable, cannot be discarded, free pull from Hanks. Let's use it. You open the box and a pair of bat wings flaps out and into your inventory. All right, bat wings. It is a back item. A big pair of leathery bat wings scaled up to human size. You control them via nerve impulses they pick up from your neck is surprisingly intuitive. Type, back item, cannot be traded or discarded, all attributes plus five, combat initiative plus 100%, plus 50% food drops from monsters, find fruit, random bonuses underground, use some bat skills. Okay, that's pretty awesome that these bat wings help you find fruit. And random bonuses underground, use some bat skills. And I love more combat initiative. That's always a nice thing, especially as a moxie class for the pickpocketing. There they are on my back. So first I'm going to look at my non-combat skills to see if there's anything new and exciting. Okay, I don't see anything new for non-combat skills. I can't remember if the shadow rifts are underground or not. But let's look at our combat skills. Ooh, summon cauldron of bats. Swoop like a bat. Do I want to summon a cauldron of bats? I can't imagine they'd be very happy at being stuck in a cauldron. I can swoop like a bat. I like that swooping is free and cauldron of bats, whatever it does, is one mojo point. So those are both very affordable. So let's swoop like a bat because that's free. You launch yourself into the air and swoop past your opponent, soaring on your leathery bat wings. You manage to grab something as you fly by. Oh, okay. So I can not pickpocket exactly, but get one of the items. It's hard to see in this place, but that doesn't mean it's underground. Hmm, pretty sure that last message is the spring shoes. I just really like how those bat wings look. They're really cute. I want to find some bat wings to wear for Halloween. Okay, and let's check if the shadow rifts are underground. Nope, it is outdoors. All right, we've got a shadow slab. So let's swoop like a bat again. Nice! Shadow brick! Love it! Now we're gonna summon a cauldron of bats. You flap your wings in the universal sign for bat needs help and a cauldron that's the fancy name for a flock of bats. Oh, of bats, flocks cauldrons to you and attacks your foe, biting and sucking for one plus 65 damage. I mean, that's nice. 65 damage is noticeable, but I'm wondering if that's coming from a different bonus that I have somewhere. And I also think it's interesting that the bats are vampire bats, but the bat wings help me find fruit. So I'm a fruit bat. I'm a fruit bat, but when I call for help, I call for vampire bats to help. I mean, I guess that sounds like the right bats to call for help. With your keen bat senses, you catch a whiff of ethylene and then echolocate the source. You acquire an item, lime. Nice. Swoop like a bat. Shadow break. Whee! Okay, so this time I got a shadow bread on the pickpocket, so is swooping like a bat gonna do anything? Yep, sure is. Very nice. Two shadow breads. I like it. Okay, I got a shadow stick. And then another shadow stick. Beautiful. So I'm liking that the swoop like a bat seems to have a really high success rate at stealing items. Yeah, swoop like a bat is really, really nice. Let's see, where might be underground? Are you underground, Snowjo? Oh, interesting. So I was able to swoop like a bat every single time in the Shadow Rifts, but now with the Snowjo, there's no swoop like a bat. Which might make sense, because the snowman does not inherently have any item drops. Okay, so swoop like a bat did a lot more damage here. 66 plus... 66 normal damage plus 132 spooky damage. Ah, nope. Snowman is indoors. Ooh! 
you can never have enough, a regular bat flaps over it and drops what appears to be a spare set of bat wings. Perhaps they're confused by your bat wings? <laughs> I don't want to know where this bat got a spare set of bat wings. That last I checked, bats don't grow spares. So this one also only has someone cauldron of bats. So now I'm wondering if there's only a limited number of casts per day, which coincidentally may be the same number of adventures that you get for free in the Shadow Rifts. So 11, in which case I just used up all my swoops. So I won't be able to check again. Okay, that's my new theory, is that you have a limited number of swoop like a bat casts per day, and that I've already used them all up. Which would make sense, because it was stealing an item from those shadow monsters pretty consistently might have been 100 percent and that is a really good thing because the shadow rift monsters typically have really low drop rates so in my case i was able to get more shadow bricks that i can use because i was swooping now one thing i didn't check and it's too late now is whether or not you can swoop like a bat more than once. Although I want to say that the swoop like a bat disappeared once I had used it on the monster. And that's that's an interesting question because the industrial fire extinguisher, whichever skill that one is, polar blast I want to say, that one can be used multiple times on the same monster. So that would make swoop like a bat a little bit different from the industrial fire extinguisher, which is no bad thing. It just forces me to find 11 distinct monsters to use the swoop on. Like, they can be the same type, but they just have to be different instances of that monster. Your sonar bounces off some creepy remains in this underground terrain. You acquire an item, Skeleton Bone. Ooh, you embrace your bat self in this underground area. You acquire an effect, Batty. Batty, you are feeling your bat self. 10% combat initiative, 5 spooky damage. So small, but always helpful. Nothing wrong with that. 5 turns is kind of short, but let's see if anything like that happens again. You embrace the subterranean nature of your environment and grab a quick bat nap on the ceiling. You gain 18 mojo points, you gain 18 hit points. Nice. You flap your bat wings gustily and launch yourself to your next adventure in an instant. Ooh. Your sonar bounces off some creepy remains in this underground terrain. You acquire an item, loose teeth. Launch yourself to your next adventure in an instant sure sounds like that was a free turn but i wasn't paying attention so i don't know all right i'm gonna have to pay better attention now being underground you make like a bat and <laughs> you acquire an item bat guano huh summon a cauldron of bats disappeared Okay, so there must be a limited number of casts for both skills. Just summoning is likely a higher threshold. You embrace the subterranean nature of your environment and grab a quick bat nap on the ceiling. Okay, so Cobb's Knob is indeed underground, and I got Batty again for five adventures. And this time I got a fruit, a lemon. Let me just double check that this is underground. Nope, it is outdoors. Okay, when I was underground, I was consistently getting either a bat nap or a random underground drop, like a broken skull or a skeleton bone, or five turns of the effect batty, or bat guano. Those are the four choices I can remember receiving, and I got it every turn when I was underground, but as soon as I go outdoors again, then the after combat messages switch, and I started getting fruit. And this time I got nothing. I'm trying to think what other underground environments I could try. Oh, the Dire Warren is underground. And I just want to note, 19 mojo points and hit points sounds like a lot until I look over at my character pane and realize that I'm level 19 and I have 677 hit points and 960 mana points. So it's helpful. It's absolutely helpful. But it's also small in proportion to my capacity. Weird. Inside the palatrome is an outdoor environment? Alrighty then. I thought maybe fighting bats would be more likely to trigger the after combat message even though I'm not underground. But that doesn't appear to be the case. I don't notice anything after the free run. It is still underground. Hmm. There's no message from being underground, so I wonder if fighting at the Undying doesn't count as being underground, even though the rest of it was. Oh, I'm definitely not underground, so I just found a fruit. Interesting, the Ed fight didn't count as underground, and I'm not sure it was a zone at all because the florist friars think that the most recent place I adventures was the middle chamber. So first impressions, I love the flavor on these things. <laughs> Like I said, I want to get some bat wings and wear them for Halloween. That sounds like a lot of fun. Especially if they can be controlled somehow with my neck. I mean, I don't know what they do exactly, but anyway, that sounds really cool. 
All attributes plus 5 is not that impressive. Combat initiative plus 100% is always, always, always helpful, especially when it comes to the naughty sorceress's tower tests and anytime you're trying to get the jump on a monster so that you can pickpocket. Plus 50% food drops is nice. There are lots of times when you need to get more cooking ingredients as you adventure around the kingdom. Finding fruit was also nice. That should help make food and or cocktails depending and that seemed to fire anytime I was not underground and it wasn't a hundred percent obviously but it was often enough that I was getting some useful fruit. So I did not notice getting anything special in terms of fruit. For example with the spring shoes I feel like I've gotten some different fruit like maybe even mini kiwis from the mini kiwi Mr. Store Familiar and I wasn't noticing anything like that but I also was spending most of my time underground because I was trying to find those random bonuses. Particularly that at one time it made it sound like I got a free adventure but unfortunately I wasn't paying attention and I don't know if I got free adventure or not and every single underground adventure after that gave me some other bonus but the nice thing about being underground is that it did consistently give a bonus every single adventure even if it was something small like a skeleton bone. The very first time I adventured underground today I did get that non-combat adventure. I can't remember what it was now, but that was kind of interesting. But I didn't see it again in any other underground zone. So I'm not sure what was going on there. Is it just going to be a, a one and done per day? The first time you adventure anywhere underground or not? And I, I really want to know if it was a free adventure or not. The baddie bonus is small but useful. Finding skeleton bones and such doesn't immediately sound useful, but I, I could be missing an application there. Bat guano really doesn't sound useful. I mean, I, I can go check my cooking recipes, but I can't remember anything with bat guano that sounded all that great, as you might expect. And the bat nap was nice, but like I said, small as compared to my overall capacity for hit and mana points. So the underground bonuses, I wouldn't go seeking them out, other than to try and figure out what was up with that non-combat and that potential maybe free adventure. But the rest of them were, you know, uh, something that I would appreciate getting incidentally, but not, not seek out specifically. The bat skills were the really cool ones. So summon a cauldron of bats for one mana point seemed like one of those nice get out of jail free situations, right? Like, oh no, I'm dying. I don't have any way to attack my opponent. Oh wait, I still can summon a cauldron of bats to help. That said, unless the monster I'm fighting is, is really low power, Summoning that cauldron of bats isn't going to take them out. I want to say the most damage I saw from that cauldron of bats was something on the order of 200 hit points, which most of the monsters I was fighting were more than that. So nice, but probably not something that will actually save me if I'm in a bad spot. I don't know how often I'll use the skill to summon a cauldron of bats. However, swooping like a bat seemed super useful because it seemed like it had a really really high success rate in grabbing an item from my opponent and from that perspective using it in the shadow rifts was really helpful because those drops can be kind of hard to get without a lot of item drop bonuses so getting the item from the opponent almost every single time is really nice it seemed like i was only able to use it once per opponent once it was used i couldn't do it again and it also seemed limited both of the skills seemed limited on the number of casts per day. Swoop like a bat I'm really excited by. That is something I will definitely use potentially every day even if it is only once per monster unlike the industrial fire extinguisher but like I said summon a cauldron and bats not as useful but just the passive bonuses from wearing this are quite nice right finding fruit combat initiative 50% food drops it's really similar though to the spring shoes right combat initiative plus 100% except the spring shoes give you a 50% chance of critical hit whereas the other one is a 50% boost to food drops so you know food drops one could argue whether they're quite as useful and the fruit finding may or may not be as useful as the spring shoes time will tell I, like I said I didn't adventure much not underground because I was really I was really trying to find those random bonuses so this one's intriguing I'm gonna have a lot of fun playing with it all right I read some other folks's first impressions about the new item of the month the bat wings and there's a few more things that I should try out so first of all I'm going to check if I have a new non-combat skill aha Rest upside down. Usable 11 times per day, 11 left. Take a nap hanging upside down from the ceiling, just like nature intended. Okay, so I was looking for something that had bat in the title, which it clearly does not. You find a nearby horizontal surface and hang by your wings for a while. You gain 1,000 hit points, you gain 1,000 mojo points. 
That is really, really, really cool. 11 times per day? Wow, I am gonna use that. <laughs> Who doesn't need a big refill of hit points and mana points now and again? Nice. So the other thing. So the first time I visited the entryway, I got that special non-combat, right? And I'm told there should be more. There. As your wings flap in synchronicity with the denizens of this chamber, the tip of one knocks a bean bat out of the sky. You harvest its body. Ooh. You acquire an item Enchanted Bean. Nice. So all you have to do is visit the Bean Bat Chamber and you will get the Enchanted Bean to move on to the penultimate fantasy airship once that quest is unlocked. Very, very nice. Guano Junction. A Skull Bat flaps over and drops a tribute at your feet. You acquire an item, Sonar and a Biscuit, Bats of a Feather. All right, so the first time you visit Guano Junction, you can unlock one of the other chambers. And the same for the Bat Rat and Rat Bat Burrow. One of us. You sense an immediate kinship with the Bat Rat that flies over to you. Two half bat creatures found themselves together in this world of whole bats. The Bat Rat tips its head, body, and amalgam in respect and leaves you a small token. You acquire an item, sonar, and a biscuit. With two turns, you can unlock the Bean Bat Chamber, and then adventuring once in the Bean Bat Chamber gets you the Enchanted Bean. You'll still have to get the Sonar and a Biscuit or Screen Bat to open up the Boss Bat Chamber, but that should really save some time. That's really nice. And I'm also reading that there's benefits to trying to clear the Penultimate Fantasy Airship, which I've already done this Ascension, and also that there are benefits for those still trying to bridge the orchasm, which I have also done this ascension. So the bat wings are really, really cool. I'm really excited now to take them out on my next ascensions. Awesome. Thanks for watching.